Greetings, unsettled souls. Very unsettled souls. And welcome back to the correct views. If you're not unsettled, there's something wrong with you. Um, I know, everybody wants good news. Fine, good news. The marijuana initiatives in Colorado and Washington have passed. So now state governments have spoken and it's up to the federal government to uh, break the laws of the states, uh, which are supposed to be, uh, at least in theory, able to decide these things themselves. Okay, fine. I have no other good news. Do you know why? Because we completely let the man down. Now, I'm not talking to you people that voted for Ron Paul. Um, there were people that swore to do that because they were, uh, it, was a, it was a movement against um, the way he was being treated. And it was uh, people's way of telling the GOP that uh, it wasn't going to be forgotten. Okay, fine. The rest of you, what is wrong with you people? First of all, all these Christians who didn't want to vote for Gary Johnson and because he was pro-life, why didn't you vote for Virgil Good? He's a libertarian who does not want to legalize drugs and who is pro-life. Um, I personally am not that social conservative uh, myself, but you guys, you know what? You guys, he's a good man. You know what happens when you don't support a good man? Good men quit running. So instead of a good Christian president, you Christians who wouldn't support Johnson over his pro-life stance voted for a Mormon. Okay, great. Um, nothing against Mormonism, but come on. If, if, don't tell me you're a great Christian if you voted for a Mormon. Um, what I mean by that is, don't, all right, let me rephrase that. Don't say to me that Christianity is important to your vote if you voted for a Mormon. Um, do I find anything wrong with the Mormon people? No. Do I have anything wrong with people being allowed to practice Mormonism? No. Does Mormonism make any sense? No. Um, I'm not going to get into a debate on Mormonism. I, I don't really care that the man's a Mormon. I care that the man wanted the NDAA, just like Obama, who you elected. I care that he wants to bomb a uh, nuclear power plant um, in Iran. I'm upset about many things. Um, so that, that, now we got, you know, the most unchristian person of all time. He probably have horns on his head. We've got Obama. And if you're wondering if I feel badly for having not voted for Romney, no, I do not. As a matter of fact, I feel really good inside. This is what I wrote on my Facebook as a update. I have a clear conscience, so I did not waste my vote. Today we let America down. No, not by voting for Obama, even though that was just a tad worse than Romney in doing so. No, we let down our country by one, letting Ron Paul slip away, two, not getting Gary Johnson into the debates, and three, not getting Johnson at the 5% that the libertarians could really fight with, with the two parties in 2016. We will all pay for these three errors, and thankfully, I can say that I was not part of it in any way. And you know what? A clear conscience is worth a lot. And you people that voted for Obama and Romney, you either don't have clear consciences, you're stupid, or uh, you don't have a conscience at all, maybe. Here's how we messed up, people. Bob Barr got half of 1% in... Oh, wait. Look how much Johnson has accomplished with almost no money. That little bit of money that he got in federal matching funds and donations from people like you and I. Imagine what he could have done with federal matching funds if he would have hit 5% of the national vote. He was polling at 5 to 7%. In Ohio, he was as high as 10%. Could somebody please tell me how he only got 1% of the national vote? I'm not on here saying that the man was cheated and he should be the president, but clearly, he, he, while he was never going to win the election, 
These numbers do not add up. Who's with me on this? Having said that, by not getting him his 5%, he's only going to get now federal matching funds equal to twice what they had this year instead of the millions that 5% would have got it. And we are going to pay for this as a nation. We have elected, not me, and, I, and I'm going to rephrase that, as a nation, we have elected a man to the office who has proven in his first term that he wants to arrest and detain American citizens without a trial and in many cases without a lawyer, NDAA, look that up. We elected a man who has kept the George Bush timetable for war and added wars and added millions of people and millions of casualties, I should say, to the list in Libya. We have elected a man who is going to force taxes upon us. Obamacare, at its very least, should be optional. It's not. It's going to be forced. We have signed up for hell is what we have done. And I'll tell you what, I'm not positive as I post this. I'm not one of these people that's saying liberty marches on. Hines, in the 12th District of Ohio, lost. More big government voted. What is wrong with you people? Here's where it goes, people. I'm not going to keep rambling on it. I told you the three ways that we blew it. Letting Paul get away, not getting Johnson up to 5%, and not getting him in the debates. When America continues to fall to garbage, I will be able to stand in front of my creator and say, I've done a whole lot of rotten things, but I did not vote for this monster. All right, guys, uh, cnsnews.com. U.S. piled up more debt since Election Day 08 than under all presidents from Washington through Clinton. Um, I'm not even going to read the story. That The headline pretty much speaks for itself. And we voted for this man. Listen to this. More debt since Election Day of 08 within two months. That's from when Obama, when Obama took office. We have racked up more debt since Election Day 08 than under all presidents from Washington through Clinton. And this is the man that we sent back to the White House. I'll tell you, I, I don't know that, I mean, obviously I'm staying in the liberty movement. Obviously I might be running for something someday, but I'll tell you what. My, my uh, positive feelings in, in regards to the movement has been going low ever since Rand Paul endorsed um, Romney and ever since Super Tuesday, Unsuper Tuesday fell through. I'm losing faith in all of it, people. Where are you? Johnson was polling at 10% in Ohio. How did he end up with 3 to 4%? Could somebody tell me this? I think, well, I think he was down to 1% 1, 1 by the time it was closed. And also, does anybody have any idea how to get figure out how many of you penned in Ron Paul? I do wish that you hadn't done that. Christelle did. I, I understand why. I, I started the show with it. But if you would have voted Johnson, we might have hit this 5%. Does anybody know how many write-ins Paul got? Um, this is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. And friends, if you have not eaten at the Arcadia Grill, it is located on Court Avenue in Canton. Go. Delicious food. If you have eaten there, leave a message on the comment. Let people know what delicious food they have. They're not just a sponsor of the show. They are somebody who I wanted to be a sponsor of the show because I like their food. And it's delicious. And I'm telling you to go there. And you will be happy that you did. The Arcadia Grill, Court Avenue, Camp Ohio. Um, two more stories real quick. I'm just too depressed to do a show. Um, but I'm doing one anyway, I guess. But I'm not making it real long, people. Again, I, I'm, I'm not upset that we didn't take the White House. But I'm upset that, I mean, 1% for Gary Johnson? That's what the Liberty Movement produced? 
police state growth rate of cops exceeds population growth, not only is violent crime down in this country, um, look up the last five years, uh, we're down from where we were five years ago. Um, I think we're up a little bit from where we were one year ago. But in any event, you know what I mean. The police state growth rate of cops exceeds population growth. Infowars.com, Kurt Nemo. The Bureau of Justice Statistics has released a report demonstrating that the growth of police in the United States. The survey was conducted with agencies that participated in the 2008 Census of State and Local Law Enforcement Agencies, and the results were released by the Justice Department this month. It goes on. Between 92 and 08, the numbers of police grew by 25%. In 08, there were 705,000 full-time sworn officers employed in the United States. The number was 564,000 in 92. It represents a growth rate of 1.6%, which exceeds the 1.2% population. So violent crime is going down, and there are less people. So you can't argue that there are more people. No. They both have gone down, but we've got more cops than ever giving you tickets for going five miles an hour over the speed limit and getting in your face calling you drunk when you're sober. Ha! I'm so happy what happened in Colorado and Washington. Fire it up, my friends. Good for you. At least, at least, where were you? Where were you? Now that I think about it, Colorado, you did better than most people on Johnson. Washington, what the hell? Don't you know the only reason that you had all these people behind you was because of the path that Ron Paul and Libertarians have laid down and most of you voted for Romney or Obama? You need spit on! Uh, the last thing I want to get to, the Times of India, fish near Fukushima still contaminated. Um, for those of you that don't know, Fukushima is a place you've never heard of. You're listening to the election stuff and you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to catch you up to date in 30 seconds. March 11, 2011, and all these facts are verifiable. March 11, 2011, nuclear power plant in Japan blew up. Three nuclear reactors are melting down. One impossible melt through. Um, that means that nuclear poison is getting to the water, poisoning Japan, and then poisoning the entire northern hemisphere. And for you Russia fans, that means America too. Um, Washington, elevated levels of cesium found fish off Japan's east coast 18 months after the Fukushima nuclear disaster suggests a continuing source of radiation in the ocean. Remember the study, for those of you that are awake, for those of you that, you know, turned off your, uh, your Lady Gaga for a minute, you heard about the salmon that are all but glowing, I should say, full of nuclear radiation in the sea. Well, that wasn't the only batch of contamination. It is still going on. So what is the solution, you say? Sam, should I never eat fish again? There are two things that you should do. First of all, take fish oil. Preferably take fish oil that is uh, been, uh, it'll say no mercury and many things like that. Um, and in terms of your fish oil source and your fish, number two, your fish itself, this might be the only time I ever say this, as long as it's not in an extremely inhumane way, you're probably better off eating fish that is not from an ocean. Um, if it must be from an ocean, I don't know where you'd get it, but you'd probably want to get it from the southern hemisphere. I personally suggest, um, and someone let me know if you're a nutrition nut and I'm wrong here, it's best to get fish that are not from an ocean and uh, ditto on the fish oil. Um, you don't want its sources coming from there either. You are listening to the correct views. Please donate to the show. Um, contact me at jov mr self destruct at hotmail.com. J O V. Um, and uh, that, that'll be a huge help. I'm trying to get a, another computer so that I can process the show uh, with the camera quality that I have. And all donations that you give me go to a better show. Please help me. Thank you. Good night. God bless. You're listening to The Correct Views on one of the worst nights in recent American history.